Hey everyone, I'm Ken Conklin and today we're going to take a look at Adobe Camera Raw. As always, we're going to cruise through these tricks fairly quickly, so feel free to pause or rewind the podcast if we're going too fast. And remember, always work on a copy of the image, not the original. Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at some of the basics of Adobe Camera Raw and how to get the most out of your raw images. Many mid to high end digital cameras now allow you to shoot in what they call a raw mode. When you shoot in raw mode, your camera is basically just writing all the data from its image sensor directly to your memory card without doing much processing of the image data. This allows you to tweak some of the processing options like white balance, exposure, and other options on your computer after you've actually shot. Now raw images do have some drawbacks. First, raw images take up a lot more space on your camera's memory card, so you can't fit as many images on each card. Also, many applications won't open raw images so you'll need to use special software to convert these raw files to a format that other applications can understand. Luckily, Photoshop CS and CS2 include some software for converting and tweaking raw images. The software is called Adobe Camera Raw and is actually built right into Photoshop CS and CS2. So to get started, we need to open a raw image in the Camera Raw application. You do this basically the same way you'd open a normal image in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, simply go to the File menu, then select Open. Find your image in the Open dialog box, then click the Open button. This will bring up the Adobe Camera Raw dialog box. This box is divided into four major sections. Along the top you'll see all of your tools. On the right you'll see settings and sliders for all the parameters we can adjust for our raw image. And then the image preview in the middle and some output settings on the bottom. The first thing you want to do with your raw image is to set the white balance. Setting the white balance correctly will ensure that all the colors in your image are accurate. You have to do this because colors appear different to your camera under different lighting situations. So you can actually set your white balance in a few different ways. Camera Raw has a bunch of preset white balance settings which you can pick from from a pop-up menu on the right hand side of the dialog box in the section called White Balance. The presets include common lighting situations like daylight, shade, fluorescent, or flash. Pick the preset that most closely matches the lighting situation your photo was taken in. Below this pop-up you'll see two additional sliders, one labeled temperature and one tint. You can use these two sliders to tweak your white balance even further. Dragging the temperature slider to the left will cool the colors in your image, while dragging it to the right will warm things up. The tint slider will, you guessed it, change the tint of your image. Another simple way to set your white balance in Camera Raw is to use the white balance tool. To use this method, select the white balance tool from the toolbar at the top of the dialog box. It should look like an eyedropper filled partially with gray. Now click on a spot in your image that should be a neutral gray color. This will set all of your colors in your image based on the neutral color spot you clicked. 
Don't worry about playing around with your white balance, since you can always reset your color balance to its default, or how the camera set it, by simply double clicking on the white balance tool in that toolbar at the top. Now that we have the white balance set, let's take a look at some of the other adjustment sliders on the right hand side of the dialog box. The first slider underneath the white balance sliders is the exposure slider. Dragging this slider to the right will brighten your image, while dragging it to the left will darken your image. This slider actually works by setting the white point of your image. It allows you to fix slight over or under exposures on the white point. But don't be expecting a miracle here. Dragging it past plus or minus 2 will probably lead to image quality degradation. For more precise editing, you can hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC while adjusting this slider. This will turn your image preview black. Now as you drag the slider with this key held down, you'll notice spots start to appear on your image. These spots are showing you where the whites are clipping. This means those areas of color are either in danger of turning completely white or are already 100% white. There is very little or no detail in these clipped regions of your image. Just solid white. Now a little clipping in the white point can be okay, and oftentimes it's desirable. Just make sure you aren't going overboard here. Next is the shadows slider. This will adjust the black point of your image. To set this slider, just drag the slider to the right while keeping an eye on your image. When you find a spot that looks good, stop. Again, the Option key or Alt key trick will also work with the shadows slider, but it will instead display where the blacks of your image are being clipped. The next slider is Brightness. This adjusts your midtones of your image. Adjust this slider to make sure the overall tone of your image looks good to you. Then adjust the contrast slider to find a contrast setting that works with your image. Dragging the slider to the right will add contrast, while dragging it to the left will decrease contrast a bit. And finally we get down to the saturation slider. This slider adjusts the intensity or saturation of the colors in your image. Moving the slider to the right increases the saturation, while moving it to the left decreases it. Again, adjust this while keeping an eye on your image and find a setting that looks good to you. If you want to quickly see how your image would look in black and white, you can drag this slider all the way to the left to get a quick preview of a black and white image. So now you should have a beautifully toned image with a lot less quality loss than had you made all these corrections with similar tools in Photoshop on a regular JPEG image. Now keep in mind we've only brushed the surface of Camera Raw here, so make sure to play with some of the other settings in the Camera Raw dialog box to see what else you can do with your raw images. Thank you.